The Lord be with you. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Junction City, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Timothy Roser, and on this Christmas Eve, we follow the order of Vespers. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Psalm 96. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all, all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our office hymn is number 376 in Lutheran service book, Once in Royal David City. Once in royal David City stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Mary was that mother mild, Jesus Christ her little child. He came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all. And his shelter was a stable, and his cradle was a stall. With the poor and mean and lowly, lived on earth our Savior holy. For he is our childhood's pattern, day by day like us he grew. He was little, weak, and helpless, tears and smiles like us he knew. And he feels for all our sadness, and he shares in all our gladness. And our eyes at last shall see him through his own redeeming love. For that child, so dear and gentle, is our Lord in heaven above. And he leads his children on to the place where he is gone. Not in that poor lowly stable with the oxen standing by shall we see him but in heaven set at god's right hand on high then like stars his children crowned all in white his praise will sound 
The Old Testament reading, the Nativity of our Lord, is from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Paul's letter to Titus, chapter 2. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodly and godliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness, and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Unite my heart to fear your name, that I may walk in your truth. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. 
Those shepherds in the fields outside of Bethlehem were just minding their own business, tending their flocks that night. They weren't waiting for some special holiday. I'm sure they hadn't set up a tree and put lights on it. They weren't anticipating anything would be different from the night before, or the night before that, or the night before that. They didn't know that this night was going to be the first Christmas Eve. Suddenly they were confronted by this angelic messenger, and following him came an overwhelming army of angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Those glorious angelic announcements sent them scurrying off to Bethlehem, leaving their sheep behind so that they could see this baby that had been born. But once the angels had gone away from them into heaven, there were no mysterious lights to guide the shepherds. The caves that served as stables at the edge of the town were quiet and dark. Eventually, they found the baby there, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, just as the angel had said. But there was no halo glowing around his head. No heavenly light shining from the face of the newborn baby Jesus. I wonder if the shepherds expected something more. We might have suggested a better location, at least bring some lights in and get those animals out of there. Maybe bring in some armed guards to protect him and his parents, or angel choirs singing softly, hovering in the air above the stable. No, none of that here. Look at how he comes, this Jesus. He comes in utter poverty. His parents were among the poorest of the poor. Joseph was a a carpenter, a builder in wood, stone, and earthwork. But he had no union wages or benefits that might have provided health care for him and his family. No guarantees for a livable income. No pension or retirement fund on which he could rely. As hardworking as Joseph was, he would still just barely scrape by. And just why should anyone take notice of Jesus' parents or offer them special treatment? Social status and rights were given to a very few people in those days. Yes, Joseph and Mary were descended from the royal line of King David. So were a lot of other people, especially in Bethlehem, the city of David. These poor parents had no clout to to demand better things for their son, no matter how special he might be. And of course, that special nature of Jesus went unseen by human eyes. Very few knew of Gabriel's visit to Mary, announcing that her child would be the son of the Most High. Perhaps fewer people knew of the angel who appeared to Joseph in a dream, telling him that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, and that this child, Jesus, would save his people from their sins. But here in the stables of Bethlehem, with only a brief brief burst of angelic joy to herald it, The glory of God is set aside, and the Son of God is born in human flesh. So here he is, the King of kings and Lord of lords, wrapped tightly in strips of cloth. No silks, no fine linens. He wasn't even born in a house. Because of the census ordered by Caesar, Bethlehem was so crowded that no one would give way to the plight of a pregnant woman about to give birth. So his birthplace was a stable, likely a cave at the edge of town. His first visitors were not nobles or dignitaries or religious leaders from around the globe, but a group of smelly shepherds from the fields across the valley. Yes, look at how he comes. This Jesus comes in such a lowly fashion to people who aren't watching or paying attention to his coming. You and I might think Jesus would come in a way that would make more of a splash, something special that would grab our attention and wake us up as to who he is. Oh, really? And just what would that something special be? Think of how many special once-in-a-lifetime events are promoted these days. Think of the extensive efforts, the tremendous lengths people go to, trying to draw attention to movie openings, concert tours, new big buildings, new businesses. No matter how many headlines they may grab, there are always people out there who still ignore them. For one reason or another, people just believe it doesn't matter to me. With earthly things, that may be true. But with heavenly things, they matter. Yet people convince themselves that heavenly things don't matter. They get so wrapped up in themselves in running their own lives their own way that they ignore the things of God. This wasn't just true of the Jews of ancient Bethlehem. It's been true of mankind throughout history. And it's still true of us today. Frankly, much of the time, 
we just don't care about Jesus coming. We don't even think about it. Mind you, we don't imagine that we're disobeying God. We just think our way of life makes more sense to us than God's way. And it would be inconvenient to let God in and let him change our routines, our ways of living. Not that we're sinners in need of change, even though that's exactly what God's word tells us we are. So how does Jesus come into a world of people like this? Quietly. No promotional offers, no press conferences, no headlines. You see, he's not going to deal with this world by the way he arrives, and by what he, but by what he does once he gets here. And so Jesus comes. How? Not for himself, for his own publicity, fame, or reputation. No. He comes for us. Jesus comes to share our life with us, to live among us. Born in weakness as a baby, he gets hungry and he eats. He gets thirsty and he drinks. He gets tired and needs to sleep. All these things that are not an issue for God become part of the life of the Son of God once he is born in human flesh. How does Jesus come? He comes in humility. The Son of God living is one of us. Jesus experienced the things you and I experience, the joys and the pains of life. He was saddened over the sickness people suffered. He wept at the death of his close friend Lazarus, even though he knew he was about to raise Lazarus from the dead. For the tragedy of death brings pain and tears, things Jesus knew firsthand. How does Jesus come? He comes with a boldness that unveiled the power he has as the Son of God. He reached out to touch, to heal the sick, even though his power terrified those around him. He spoke God's words plainly, knowing that he would be rejected as a threat to the Jewish leaders. How does Jesus come? He comes prepared to suffer and ultimately to die. He didn't do this for himself. Jesus didn't deserve punishment for he did nothing wrong. Unlike us, Jesus was born without sin. Then he sacrificed himself, openly giving his life all the way to the cross, to pay for all the sins of sinful mankind. As true man, Jesus was able to die for the sins of the world. As true God, Jesus could die for the sins of the whole world. How does Jesus come? He comes prepared to die and prepared to rise from the dead. And through his death and resurrection, he earned the forgiveness of our sins for us. And thereby he has opened to us the door to everlasting life with God. Jesus comes with this plan in mind and with his ascension into heaven in view. Jesus comes so that once his work here on earth is finished, he may return to the right hand of the Father, to his throne of glory, from whence he will come again to judge the living and the dead. All this comes to pass from this tiny baby, the one wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Jesus comes in humility to be our Savior. Indeed, Jesus has come. And God's word and God's angels make his message and his mission clear. Friends, this Jesus has not just come for this night, but for every night throughout the year. His message and mission are not just something we remember over these holidays. We gather around them as we gather around his word and sacraments every week of the year. So, with shepherds, let us return to our daily lives, glorifying and praising God for all that they and we have heard and seen as it has been told. We can go forth in joy this night, rejoicing at this great gift from God to us. For Jesus has come, and by all that he has done for us, he binds us to God's gift of life that is yet to come. In the name of Jesus. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded 
the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from this day, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things to me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, by the incarnation of your eternal Son, you reveal that you are love. Give us true faith in Christ and his promise that by his conception, virgin birth, holy life, sacrificial death, and victorious resurrection, our sins are forgiven and we are yours. Fill us with joy and lead us to proclaim your glad tidings to all people. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, by his birth in human flesh, your dear son took his place in the family of Mary and Joseph. Bless the families of our church and our country that men and women would live faithfully as husbands and wives, loving and caring for their children and nurturing them in the grace of baptism and all the truth of your word. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son born in Bethlehem is the Son of David and the Lord of David, to whom every knee shall bow. Look upon those you have placed in authority, especially President Biden and the Congress of the United States, Governor Evers and the legislature of this state, and grant that they would govern in wisdom and justice. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, you love us and sent your Son to be the sacrificial payment for our sins. Strengthen us to love one another. As you have mercy upon all who are poor and troubled, so perfect your love in us that we would gladly be your instruments of help in time of need. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Holy Lord, in the birth of your Son, you have visited and redeemed your people. Continue to visit those who are lonely, sick, recovering, or near death. Let your presence be a comfort to them, and give them perseverance until the time you grant healing, relief, deliverance, and peace. Hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Lord be with you and blessed and joyous Christmas time be.